Welcome to Podcast Marketing Secrets, the place for entrepreneurs, coaches, and CEOs who are looking to grow their business with a podcast, become a key person of influence in their industry, and get their ideal clients to come to them, also known as Attraction Marketing. I'm your host, Al Morenton. My guest today is Henri Boychuk. Henri is, and his family moved to the U.S. in 2004 before launching Floium. Andre uh, spent nine years working in corporate America, advancing from a junior position to senior project manager at the Clarion Group. He focused on designing integrated smart building design solutions. In 2017, he created Floium to help businesses realize the full potential of email marketing. Since then, he's pioneered strategies to translate a strong customer retention ground game into stable revenue growth. He's an avid reader devoted to his two beautiful daughters and loving wife. Welcome to the show, Andre. Thank you very much for all for such a uh, introduction, detailed introduction. Awesome, awesome. So, um, how did you go from project manager to getting into like helping people with email marketing in their businesses? <laughs> sure. Uh, you know, back in the days when it like elementary school back in Ukraine, when I, you know, when you take those tasks where they kind of define you, like what is your kind of personality, who you will be when you grow up. And uh, my teacher told me, listen, you have interesting uh, character, uh, interesting result. He, she said, uh, part of you is very analytical, very like engineer, very like structured. But another part of you is like more creative, more, more like free, free spirit thing. And I didn't kind of think much about it, but it show up later in my life when I used to work in the Clarion Group, as you said as a technology uh, technology engineer and project manager. Uh, then I kind of, I was at the end of the, my career, I was kind of sick and tired because it was kind of so straightforward. There's kind of zero creativity or it's like boundaries for your creativity. So I kind of took some time off from work completely. So I quit my job and I, I believe it's like three, Three or four months, I took uh, like did almost nothing. Was trying to figure out what 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 I can do, but also on a, when I was working in a corporate America, I had a side hustle, side project, side like website, where it was the content I was producing a lot of content for Ukrainians here in US, helping them assimilate uh, was uh, American lifestyle, and. Uh, to uh, to build the journeys because everybody comes to you as as an immigrant at different time somebody just came somebody just planning to come to you as somebody who who've been here for a while so email marketing was one tool that i could customize and uh, customize those journeys for people and provide them relevant content so it was only one skill that i knew from marketing perspective so when i start I quit my job and didn't know what to do. I started freelancing and I quickly realized that there are not much competition and not many people know how to do email marketing. So I started to provide my services. That's awesome. Yeah, because uh, um, like way early on, you know, or the early 2000s, email marketing was the thing. But like ever since like Facebook ads and you know, Instagram and TikTok and everything has come around, you know, like, like that's sort of fallen by the wayside. So I could see that how there's like a, you know, like like, like a lot of room to, for, for growth, you know, you know and, and it, it and it's super effective, you know, like it's it's, it's one of the most effective things in my eyes. Um, and the majority of users, if let's say, let's talk about Facebook, there's close a little bit more than 2 billion users on Facebook. However, there's more than 4 billion email users. So your kind of reach kind of by, 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 by market share, it's more in the email. So number one and number two, you are able to control the message, what people see and don't see via email versus on other platforms like uh, social media platforms, you are limited or you're not 100% how it will show up because they have some kind of algorithms and so forth yeah for sure for sure and um 
One of the things that that I, that I had seen when I was you know researching it a little bit is um, like uh, you you have some views on like entrepreneurial mindset and how to set winning goals. So I, I do want to talk more about the email marketing and your agency. But uh, what what are your views on that? On, on you know on entre- entrepreneurial mindset and setting goals. Um. So my view is changing uh and it's different so when i started my business i was more we all know gary vaynerchuk and i was more to his philosophy but at that that moment i did not have kids uh, i i believe i still live with my girlfriend right now my wife so i had more time but not much money so i was able to hustle was able to give my uh, all my time i so i had that mentality of hustling but fast forward to today uh i don't hustle as much as i used to be but i make more money and um, i work more on the strategic things and i don't set such an ambitious goal because i know it's a uh, it's almost impossible to set uh, to to achieve them in one year or six months so um i would say uh, that it all depends on your stage, uh, life stage, and your things uh, like like what's going on in your life. So this is my, my take. I know it's not clear answer, but um, I don't want to recommend somebody who in their like fifties and they have um, four kids and wife and dog and mortgage to pay. And I will say like, hey, take a leap of faith, quit everything and start something new. So and vice versa to somebody who is like has, like 18 years old. And I said, you need to think strategically, like create some strategy. So it's it, it's hard to say. But it, at, at this moment in my life, uh, we're going into stable growth of our company, but not uh, astronomical. It's like stable, stable in incremental small uh incremental monthly uh, growth that's awesome yeah that, that a lot of times that's the best way to do it you know especially with a company like yours if you have like a some kind of product that takes off you know like, like a physical little widget then that then the hockey stick growth is yeah. is cool but like with a service-based business especially with dealing with business owners and there's you know retention factors and all this kind of stuff then uh, doing the incremental growth you know uh, and, you know just you know, trying to you know step forward step forward step forward step forward you know and um that, that that's that's a way to build a solid business because it's there's not it doesn't there's not a big drop off you know if something yes. happens you know yeah yeah you have a big a good foundation and stability so uh, awesome awesome with that and um and it's, and it's great that you realize, you know, that there are different stages, you know, and different pathways. You, yeah, you know. because, you know, like some, as some of your listeners may be doing the same thing, listening to different podcasts, different YouTube videos. And if you take few influencer back in business space, for example, um, you listen to them and they have uh, conflicting messages. And both of them are both of those people are successful. And you're like, should I listen to a guy or B guy or a seagull? Uh, like any, you know, and what the, the answer I found for myself, and again, it's it just this is what I figure out for in my what works in my life. All of them are correct, but all their advice is different on different stages. So Gary Vaynerchuk, his approach, amazing when you are young. Or you don't have much, but you have time. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I have like little, uh, like initial kind of things and initials, like MTTM and MMTT is like 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 the Gary Vaynerchuk style. The when you have more time than money, and yeah. then <laughs> like where you're at now is you have more money than time, kind of thing. Yes, yes. You know, and, and you know, and the approaches are different. So that, that's 100%. beautiful. So, um, was it difficult, uh, or how, like, what, what was the pathway like going from like your side hustle to discovering about like the, the need for email marketing to actually, you know, starting and running an agency? It was extremely, extremely hard 
to to believe in myself to believe that i can do it it was always on my mind that i need to go back uh, to work for somebody to support my family at that moment i had my uh first daughter and um it was like the first war first year what was the hardest one uh, because you yes you make some money it's not always not enough it's, it's like ups and downs you don't know how to price it actually you don't know what you don't know uh you're like after eight or nine years at corporate america there's like 100 almost 100 percent stability you know that each friday or each uh, second friday you receive that paycheck and you know how much it is here it was freelancing with your business there's no clue and sometimes it's up sometimes it's down so the answer is it was extremely hard for me right on yeah yeah and uh yeah sometimes people don't understand like like how much how difficult it is and how um how much uh, of that you have to go through at first you know because people only see like the 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 bright shiny stuff yeah. you know they, they don't see the turmoil that happens in the background yeah for sure so um as far as you know the the people that you work with um to help with email marketing you know it's obviously businesses um i'm assuming but uh yes is it more e-commerce or is what, what, what's what's your main clientele uh so, so still majority of our clients are e-commerce online business uh, online stores but in january 20 this year 2023 we start to accept other clients uh so we do have some non-profit clients we do have some b2b clients we have uh, some ag other marketing agencies where we serve them so we have a range of clientele but majority probably 80 percent of our clients are e still e-commerce awesome awesome that makes sense yeah yeah I, I actually have an e-commerce store so so um I'm gonna call it so what, what's your favorite platform is it like i, I know clavio has been popular uh yeah so uh, still we are we're a lead partner with clavio we have oh, awesome. a very strong yeah we have a strong partnership so back in since 2018 i'm working with them partnering with them but then i was a kind of small guy now they <laughs> i'm on different level um so still clavio but we do work with other platforms as well so i know that uh sand lane is pushing hard to to have a, their own space in the market and um they good they have a pretty good tool uh if somebody looking to save money is it's probably the the right choice um honestly the bottom line like almost all email marketing uh service providers um like clavio send lane mailchimp all of them do almost the same thing but the how you do and what you can do inside of them difference from a platform to platform and i mean when you pick you need to check if they fit all of your boxes nice nice and then um like so um you know that so so the so that's, that's, so that's just software that's just a tool and then you know like all the creative and uh, and you know intellectual property kind of stuff you know you help develop that through your agency right and of and, course uh, yes so, so we, um is there okay. like a, a methodology that you use to scale uh, like an e-commerce business through through sure. email marketing sure sure uh i mean the the first step we always starts from from fundamentals and by what i mean by fundamentals we always build the uh fundamentals automation uh, which match with the customer life cycle meaning when they uh, visiting your store when they checking some products when they started starting checkout when they buying the first product second product third product different kind of uh, follow-up um, uh, sequences then win, win back then uh, cleaning up your list like sunset flows uh, sunset automations so this is kind of phase number one where even if clients come to us and they have something we analyze it if, if it's good if it's bad if it's performing and what what we can optimize so this is phase number one phase number two we 
uh, take second level of those strategies, those automations and uh, optimizing and customizing them further. For example, abandoned cart, everybody knows that you must have abandoned cart in your, in your store. It's like it's given. But majority of people, majority of brands, based on our audit and experience, they have one abandoned cart for all their customers. Um, either I mean, never purchase from you or I purchased 50 times from you, you send me the same abandonment card emails, same discount and so forth. So what we encourage our clients and what we, I mean, present to our clients and implement if they approve it, we have different journey for abandoned cards. If you are non-buyer, if you're first time buyer, if you're a repeat time buyer, also next level is, did you left your card with something for $5 in the card or you left your card with $250 in your card and you are more valuable to us and we want you we want to then you bring you back to our business so this is in terms of formations in terms of segmentation same thing very popular model uh, segmentation model which not used enough i would like marketers to use more often is rfm uh, uh it's from back back from the days when they used direct mail heavily back in the days in 60s or 70s uh rfm stands for recency frequency monetary value so somebody who spent five thousand with you three years ago might not be as valuable as somebody who just spent five hundred dollars like one week ago so and we we model those segmentation for customers and uh, for our clients and we use those segments to target um to create more better offers and targeting for to, to win the customers that's awesome yeah and uh, and that's definitely something that uh uh a business owner especially, especially an e-commerce business owner um typically you know like 99.99 percent wouldn't be able to do that you know all all, all the different segmentation and all the different things you know to, to break it apart like that and um and they shouldn't be you know it's, it's time they sh you know it's because uh um especially if they're in the more money than time thing you know they, they, they yeah. need they need to focus on their product and their, you know, being a, a thought leader and doing all these different things, you know, and, and, and higher out to someone like you for sure, especially when somebody that understands the importance of all the, all, all those things that you just mentioned for sure. You know, the, and, and like you said, like, like abandoned cars is one thing. There's so many others, you know, involved. And then do you also do work, work with, you know, doing the newsletters and all that kind of stuff? Of course. Yeah. So news, uh, we, we, I mean, it's one of the most common questions, like how many emails do I need to send? So email marketing divided it into two things. So automatic emails, which we just spoke about. And there's what you just said, newsletter. Uh, broadcast uh, pr promo campaigns flash sales they, they people use those those terms to describe like one off uh campaigns mm -hmm. yeah so we do we come we typically like to come up with a uh plan for the entire month present to a client like what campaigns we planning to send to which segment what we will include in those campaigns and after uh, clients approve it we will start our copywriter designers and tech people will start to develop those emails and we schedule to and schedule those campaigns that's awesome well, awesome now what about like lead capture sure so our job starts um our job starts when somebody visits the website so some, when somebody visits the website, our job starts to collect their contact information. I mean, in our case, is email. So uh, we constantly working on um, improving and optimizing those opt-in forms, and uh, actually website in general, because in most cases it's like pop up, ten percent off, and that's it. Uh, I do understand the e-commerce brand owners don't have much time to develop the nicely nice pop-up optimize it but the conversion should be like around four four and a half percent 
uh, meaning somebody visited your website and they left uh, the email. And what we typically see when we come to work with our clients is around one to two percent. So there's like almost hundred percent growth uh, when we start working with them. So we create. We add embedded form on, in different places on the website. We add strategically the pop-up forms. We add different fly-out forms. So we we do add more options for people to leave their email. That that's awesome, and um, that that's a, one of the reasons why I think that it, it's a good to hire it out that that uh, service too is because especially for someone like me that, that's like an introvert and they don't like and they don't want to bother people and they don't you know so they might not want to put as many pop-ups or slide-ins or fly-outs or whatever you, you know like and um and uh someone like you understands exactly what is you know uh you know a website needs to to maximize you know of the lead capture and all the different things that need to, to be done. So, so you know, ha having you, someone like you do that would would uh, greatly enhance it, you know, but there's more opportunity for lead capture. So when we hear that from clients, like I don't want to bombard my clients, I don't want to like show them so many pop-ups. Uh, we always say, Are, is your ideal client profile is you? or somebody else and the answer is sometimes like no somebody else and like here's the answer like we if we design all strategies based on your profile <laughs> the strategy will look much differently if you if you all of your clients are introverts maybe i uh, maybe i will agree with you that pop-ups might be overwhelming for them yeah for sure for sure yep so that, that's awesome and then um so with uh, the, do you do like any kind of uh, like paid advertising um, to, to drive people to like landing pages or to things like that? Have you find, found that to be beneficial or no? No. So we are um, we focusing on the retention in general, retention marketing. I mean, our specialty is email marketing. However, we expanding. Let's say once we start working with a client, we adding like SMS marketing. We are adding loyalty program if uh, if it's if That's business awesome. allows to do it. We adding like subscription things, uh, a subs a cool. subscription part of the business. Uh, so we um, we do our main job to win first to convert the client to make that first purchase but second is to retain it and this retention is the key and uh so our responsibility only begins when somebody visits the website so we know we don't do any promotions all right awesome awesome uh, how about like if uh, um with a uh... If the person has like a YouTube channel or something like that, do, do, do you put like a, a, a link over to join the newsletter list or something like that in, in the in the notes? Sure. So we do. I mean, when we start working with a brand, we always we have discovery and we trying to learn as much as possible what they have, what they are leveraging. Sometimes our clients have big, as you said, YouTube channels or they have big uh, Instagram and they, what they typically do, they just link back to their website. And this is where we recommend saying, listen, let's come up with some lead magnet. Let's direct them to landing page to download this lead magnet. Let's segment where they came from for YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, because those people are different. Like they are maybe demographic is different. They needs are different. Uh, so yes, we do recommend, but again, it's up to client since we are not controlling their YouTube or Instagram. Uh, we can co only recommend, uh, but we cannot, um, yeah, I mean, enforce. But we help them with lead magnets. We are able to to create lead, lead magnets for them uh, and uh, optimize their website uh, so more people downloading that specific lead magnet. That's awesome. And then you're able to um, ha have the system to actually deliver it to, to the... To the to of the course, yeah. Well. yeah. It's part of our job. Yeah. Because even that, like, like, like um, e even that could be a roadblock for a business owner. You know, like, like to you, that's that's something that's easy and it's like whatever. But yeah, but like, 
you know, you know like how am I going to get that PDF to that person or that whatever it is, like coupon or you know how am I going to develop the coupon? How you know I go all these different things. So there's there's so many different little micro steps inside of the overall picture of what you do. Um, and that, that's why uh, someone you know someone that has a business like yours is so so valuable. You know, um, like I, w I, I was, uh, I mean, I'm going to a local gym here. It's a very small gym. It's not like big franchise. And we're working out in a group of 10, 15 people. And I today I'm like doing one of the exercise and coach comes to passes by and say, listen, uh, you're putting your back too much. You're swinging your back too much. You can hurt your back. So do this way. And he kind of as a professional, he noticed right away. So me as a, I mean, as a rookie like I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm I'm trying to 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 what he showed. I'm doing, but I'm not doing this kind of hundred percent correctly. So same thing. It's mm -hmm. um, you can learn email, uh, email marketing. You can. There's a bunch of YouTube videos. We provide a bunch of YouTube videos, and it's not always the right uh, move to go and hire somebody. Maybe your money does not allow. You don't have enough revenue. Uh, but for professionals like us, we go there and like we like can spot those steps you just described, like opt-in, uh, email, deliver of PDF. For somebody, it's complicated because you don't do this every day. But for us, it's like part of the <laughs> our like uh, being almost uh, at work. Yeah, that 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 that's uh, that's awesome. Yeah, and that that was that was a great analogy, especially for someone like me because I I owned the gym for twenty eight years. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yep, yep. So, um, so what is uh, um, I, I saw this term on, on on your website, I believe, and and uh, uh, life cycle marketing. So, uh, what what is life cycle marketing, and how can like an e commerce business use it for to leverage for growth? Sure. So, um. It's always a challenge when you have some some product, let's say a mattress, and it's hard to do the life cycle for this kind of customer. But still, you must do it. But your life cycle would be much longer. So it means somebody just heard about you, they aware about your your company, your brand, your product. They visiting your website. They in the next micro commitment. They subscribing for your newsletter. They are receiving your emails. They kind of learning about you. You educating them. Then they making first product from you. Then they leaving a review or not. They recommending to your your product to the, their friends. Then times passed, and the goal here like to nurture them, like to retain them, nurture and convert them back to buy again from you. So this is kind of like full circle. So where you started. You kind of end, and you want to keep repeating this uh, circle because only in in general, only twenty percent of your first time buyers will buy again. So you kind of missing eighty percent of customers, and I mean you can play with the number, and you have to work hard to increase that twenty percent to twenty one to twenty two to twenty five and so forth. Uh, so that life cycle is extremely important for business growth. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, and um, you always hear like the that, you know, it, it's it's cheaper to resell, you, you know, a, a current client than to get a new one. Correct. But, but people don't practice what they preach because they're always going after new people and not paying attention and trying to retain. So I love that your main focus, is, you know, or one of your main focuses is retention. And, and and that life cycle marketing because that that's huge it's huge for me I, you know i could attest to it so my my, my um few cents about that um so i'm not saying like we you should not acquire or and only retain for example it's it's impossible yeah. it's it's a plus life of the business Cl some clients will either stop buying from you because they move move to different company they i don't know you did something wrong so it's so you always need to acquire but nowadays with this kind of economy you need to focus also on retention because what i noticed during good economy everybody gets lazy <laughs> everybody screams about bad economy but i think bad economy makes us stronger and good economy makes us weaker 
and during a uh, good economy everybody like i don't care what how much it costs i want to grow 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 and everybody was focusing on the acquisition even if if the clients they got get the client at the loss it was great because we just need to acquire more and more and more clients we uh we even work with some fortune 500 companies and we know no i'm, I'm like fortune 5000 companies and uh we saw that they were acquiring heavily losing money on the client and they had close to zero email marketing close to zero retention marketing so this is not healthy business so my recommendation do your acquisition and but also focus on retention as well yeah for sure for sure and yeah so it's not one or the other it's both correct yeah. correct yeah and uh you know i i saw that with people that i was in masterminds with you know in the past where you know for gyms and uh mm -hmm. you know and it's a little different but it's the same principle where they were always doing these crazy promotions and bringing it in like crazy like like 50 people like you know crossfit style gyms you know yeah. not, not the big ones the the, the the you know the more of the you know studio kind of kind of things and like every month bringing in 50 clients and it's like you only it's so your place is only so big you, you, you they must all be leaving every month yeah. you, know, you know so um and like me i would get like maybe 10 people a month but i had crazy retention you know and yeah. and, and and i actually had the like you were saying the incremental growth it wasn't this huge thing it was just like boom little bits at a time you know and, and you become comfortable. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for sharing all, all these insights. I, I really, really appreciate, you know, all of this because um, I don't think people, number one, understand how effective email marketing is, you know, and then uh, number two, like understand how much of it is involved. It's not just like, what should I send today? Let's, you know, hop in MailChimp or whatever it is they're using and, and, and send something out. There's there's so much thoughtful process and so many different areas, you know, like, like you said, from the the basics, like the abandoned cart and all, you know, asking for a review and all those different things to the newsletters and sales and all that kind of stuff. That's awesome. Um, is there uh, like one thing or one key takeaway that people should uh take from this uh interview sure if you don't have email marketing in place don't stress enough don't think that you need to hire a freelancer or somebody like our agency to do email marketing for you my always recommendation have that at least one opt-in on your website where people actually can leave your email to receive something from you uh and create at least one automation when they opt in you welcome them like thank you very much for signing up for our newsletter and the last thing is to do at least once a month updates about what's going on in your company so send that even if you have 30 people on your list just train yourself and do that newsletter you never know maybe three of those 30 people will become your clients or maybe they know somebody who will become your clients and what we found especially for b2b what mostly click not what you sell not what service you provide but kind of personal stories like something what's going on in your life people click with that and then they want to do business with you that's awesome yeah thank you for that and thank you for coming on the show we really appreciate it um You're what's welcome. the best way for someone to get a hold of you or, or even just to, to follow you if they're like interested in you know Find sure. more about you. Just go to flowium.com. It's F L O W I U M.com. We have a bunch of ways how to opt in or contact us. But if you want to personally reach out to me, I'm very active on LinkedIn. It's just first my Andre Boychuk last name. I, I assure it will be somewhere under under or above this uh, video interview. My first and last name. And yeah, just contact me and we'll I'll reply to you. Yes, for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, and we'll be sure to include your links and stuff in, in the show notes, you know, for both the video and, and audio. So, and thank you again for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That concludes this episode of Podcast Marketing Secrets. This is Al Morenton signing off. I hope you have a successful day.